the last talk is uh, efficient wind signature in the standard model by Julia Malgolda and Dominic Schroeder. And Julia will give a talk. Um, okay, so this talk is, you might have noticed about wind signatures, so let me quickly start to um, show what the wind signature is. Um, so the, the, the basic idea is that, um, so this preview was introduced by uh, Rivas and Hall in 2001, the Asian group, and the, the, the basic idea is that um, every user is uh, addressed by, a, by his own verification key, and even a set of verification key, you, think you can take any subset of this verification key, which we um, define to be as a ring, and any uh, user that possesses a secret key belonging to the string can uh, sign any arbitrary message on behalf of the ring. And the, the, the idea for this is that you can sign messages uh, on behalf of a, of a certain group uh, while staying anonymous within this, this, this specific group. And this ring can be chosen on the fly and there is no need for a, for a setup. You can just take some key that you don't need to know the secret key of and you can just as long as you know one of the secret keys inside. And this brief is actually used in a certain real life application, which is sort of surprising really for uh, advanced cryptographic primitives. And in fact, um, Zcoin and Monero at the very core of their architecture implement something like this signature. So we, we believe that it's an interesting problem to look at. And so let me, let me quickly give you a, a, an overview about the security definition of ring signatures. Uh, for any signature scheme, of course, you would expect uh, to guarantee some sort of unforgeability. And here I refer to the definition uh, given in the seminal paper by uh, Bender, Kraft, and Morselli at TCC 2006. Uh, and I always refer, so they, they give uh, hierarchies of notion. I, uh, throughout this talk, I always refer to the, to the strongest of these notions, uh, which is, which is uh, considered the B notion for these signatures. So the first notion is unforgeability, and it's Again, a game-based definition. So an attacker is given a certain set of keys, which are um, generated uh, honestly, and is given access to two oracles, uh, ring signature oracles, where you can specify a certain index for a player, a certain message, and a certain ring to sign on behalf of, and receives uh, the corresponding signature, and is also uh, given a corrupt oracle, where you can just specify a certain index for a secret key and provide the signature. And the adversary is able to break this notion if it produces a valid tuple, r star and star sigma star, such that the signatures verify uh, the ring is honest, and by honest, I mean it's only composed of the secret key which has not been queried uh, by the, the corruption oracle. And of, of course, it shouldn't belong to this, uh, to this query of some messages to make the game more trivial. So, yeah, not, 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 not much going on here. Um, so perhaps the more interesting notion is the notion of anonymity, and here the adversary is provided again uh, with this oracle uh, that you can see uh, signatures on behalf of specific keys and so specific messages. And but the, the, the interesting notion is the fact that um, the adversary at some point of the game, so specifically whenever he issues the, the challenge query, is given all the randomnesses of um, of the key generation. So in, in this case. This models the fact that everything is uh, uh, disclosed to the, to the eyes of the adversary. And even in this context, the adversary should not be able to um, distinguish uh, whether, uh, whether a certain signature was performed on behalf of uh, the user i0 or on behalf of the user i1, as long as they both belong to this ring. Uh, okay, and here the model is saying that uh, it's, not be able to, it's not able to guess the random coin of the challenge. Okay, so what's the, what's the state of the art of, of ring signatures? Uh, we have plenty of, of free kind of constructions uh, under certain heuristics, and as we saw before, uh, those include the trusted setup and a random oracle. And under those, under those heuristics, are really a lot of schemes are known, and those are actually the ones that, 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 that are used in practice. Um, specifically, the random oracle, we have really a lot of schemes, they are all very efficient, and we can get signatures of constant size. Um, whereas in the trusted setup, so it was previously addressed as a common reference ring model, uh, we have sort of efficient schemes, so they are syntactically efficient, and in particular the best instance here is from Bose et al. from two years ago, uh, it was composed by 95 preparents. Um, 
I must mention that we measure the efficiency of swing signatures by two main parameters, which are the, the signature size and essentially the computational overhead of, uh, of the algorithm signed and verified. And for this, for, for the sake of this talk, I'm going to focus on, on, on the first, which is arguably the, the most important. Part. <coughs> okay, so uh, the next question is what about, what about um, if you don't want to make certain heuristics, right? So what if what about ring signatures in the standard model? Well, there the, the, situa the situation is, is slightly more disappointing, and we have essentially only two schemes which are known to be uh, to be secure. And the first scheme is the one again uh, presented in the, in, the, in the definition of paper of Bender and co-workers from 2006. And this is this is essentially a feasibility results because it uses uh, public key encryption and generic exhausts. I mean, it's fine in terms of assumption and everything is standard, but as long as, as soon as you try to implement this thing, uh, you have to um, go through uh, a card reduction because this, this, this uh, zero knowledge proof I use generically. So it's, it's really, really efficient. Uh, it's, it, this is meant to be a visibility result, but not, not actually a um, Whereas the work of Chao and co workers, uh, it, it's it's in the, in, the, in the standard model, so it does not have any CRS or random oracle, but it supports only rings of constant size, and, and, and it's secure against the tail discussion. So, 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 giving some sort of construction which is um, efficient, and by efficient I mean usable in practice, and at the same time the standard model is still an open problem. So, how, what's, what's our approach? This is our main result, and this is our, the outline of our approach. So we start from a, from a, from a primitive, which we call signature with randomizable key. And I'm going to explain soon what this is. And we use it in combination with my interactive zero knowledge. And this gives us almost immediately ring signatures in the common reference string. And if we instantiate the non interactive zero knowledge uh, for a certain class of statement and with a certain CRS, which has nice property, which I'm going to detail later. Then we can actually upgrade the, the, the scheme in the standard model to obtain our, our main result. Uh, here, here it essentially says that um, so the uh, instantiation of signature pre randomizable keys from the paper of Hoffman and Kids is the, it's the problem of hash function for those of you who are familiar with the paper. And we actually have to modify a little the construction, making it slightly less efficient, but this modification allows us to uh, reduce by a lot. The, the statement that we have proven zero knowledge making the whole thing uh, way more efficient since that's the actual development for our construction. Okay, so let's go out. Oh, yes, so as you can see, we have several building blocks, so signature with re-randomizable key and non-interactive zero knowledge. So depending on how we instantiate those, we get, we get different results, right? So this, this as I mentioned before, uh, is our main result. So the, uh, slightly modified version of open kids plus our non-interactive zero knowledge that we introduce gives us a, um, a scheme with uh, four times n plus three group element plus one integer. And this is uh, inherited from the scheme here, uh, where n is the size of the ring. Uh, but if and this this is secure under the QSDH and the linear knowledge of the exponent assumption, which is sort of non-standard. So if we uh, want to go back to standard assumption, we can instantiate non-interactive zero knowledge proof with another non-interactive, uh, sorry, with a scheme with a nice CRS, which I will explain later, and we obtain something against the standard assumption of the linear maps, but we get only a basic notion of anonymity. Um, if, again, we are settled with a common, common reference string, so we don't care about the standard model, then our construction immediately gives us a uh, constant, constant size ring signatures by just using a recent uh, SNARES from the uh, Europe 2016. Okay, so I mentioned before uh, this, this primitive ring uh, signatures with ring randomizable keys. So, what is this? So, ring signatures with randomizable keys, as the name suggests, is essentially a signature scheme equipped with two additional algorithms that allows us to re randomize the secret key and verification. And note that if we fit these two algorithms with the same randomness, then we can uh, obtain a consistent, uh, a consistent uh, pair of keys. And by consistent, I mean if I sign under SK prime, I can verify under BK prime as long as the value of rho is the same. And by randomized, I mean that uh, a randomized pair of keys statistically indistinguishable from a freshly sampled 
the data of kids. Uh, and as mentioned, that this 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 primitive uh, really sorry this, this property was introduced first in in a, in a work from EDC 16 uh, of in the context of bringing uh, sanitizer or something. Uh, what's the security notion here? There's not not much going on. This is a stand, stand, essentially the standard unforgeability notion, except with the small difference that in the in the signing oracle we are allowed to specify a certain randomness which is applied to the secret key and then the message is signed on behalf of this real randomized secret key. And the, the winning condition, whoops, it's not enough. So the winning condition is as you may expect. So the message should not be queried by uh, to, to, the, to the signing oracle and the verification of the two balls should go through. Okay, so this is our conceptual framework and as I said, this is in, in <coughs> C here, it's in the CRS, so this is just the first step, and then I show you how to upgrade to the standard. Um, so the idea is um, that we, we use, uh, the, to, in order to generate a secret key and verification key pair, we use a standard um, generation algorithm for signatures between randomizable keys, and then whenever we want to define a ring and we want to sign on behalf of the ring, say, against uh, Simply key two. What we do is we feed the the pre-randomization algorithm with a certain randomness row, and we create a certain uh, fresh pair S K prime B K prime. Uh, now, if we know the row and we know the, the, the ring signatures, we can actually compute the proof uh, that essentially says that um, this verification key B K prime is a valid pre-randomization of either one of these key the ring, right? So um, this, of course, is, is an interactive zero knowledge proof, so it, it leaks nothing about the weakness, which in this case is i, which is the index, and rho, which is the randomness that we used here. And then, essentially, we just need to sign against the verification key vk prime uh, and, and get uh, sigma prime as, as our uh, sub-signatures. And the, the final signature is composed by vk prime, uh, sigma prime, and i. And the, the verification is, of course, canonical. We verify uh, these two pair and just we verify the, the, the correctness of one. Okay. Um, now this this is, looks relatively straightforward. The, the the problem is that, as we saw in the talk before, uh, it seems that um, it's, of course it, the non-interactive zero knowledge inherently requires a common reference stream. So how do we get rid of it? It seems like it, there is an inherent barrier in this design that does not allow us to upgrade the scheme. Uh, but our observation is the following. Um, we can embed the common reference string in the verification key of its user. And then as long as the common reference string is nice enough, then we can combine it in, in a certain way. So if we assume that the common reference string is a group element, uh, then we can just apply the group operation and obtain a certain common reference string which is specific for the ring. So that, let me reiterate through this. Um, every every uh, verification key is now composed by the verification key and the common reference string. And in order to define a common reference string for a certain ring, it's just here I, I take a multiplicative notation, but I mean, it's very sloppy notation, but you, you understand. Uh, I just combine all together the, the common reference. So what I meant before when I said that the common reference string has to be nice. Um, has to be nice means that it has to be um, from an efficiently recognizable set. And this essentially says that the common reference string should not have any hidden access structure, otherwise the adversary um, could play with it. So remember that, that the adversary could potentially corrupt one of these keys, right, or, or even any subset of those. So if he's able to, to, to choose his common reference string adaptively, uh, then, then we might have some problem. But, but as long as we can efficiently recognize the set of common reference string, then, then we are fine, right? So, so this is one property that we would like to have. And the other, the other of course, uh, science check property is that the CRS has to be closed under composition because otherwise we cannot perform this operation. Um, okay, so fine. The problem is that Normally, our, our non-interactive zero knowledge proof work is that you either have a trapdoor in the CRS or you, you switch between like a simulation and extraction mode. So this, you pretty much always have a, um, a, a hidden structure in the CRS. So with existing scheme, this does not really work. So 
our solution was again to, to uh, design a new scheme which is simple enough and, uh, and, and supports only a specific class of languages but it suffices for our purposes. And now I'm, I'm going to give you a very, very um, uh, simplified and sloppy uh, uh, description of our scheme. So this is just for proving the knowledge of the discrete log. Um, this is actually not what it's going to be used in our scheme, but gives you a good idea of what, what we're doing. Um, so so let, let me go through it. Um, common reference string is again just one group element of which the discrete log everything is unknown. So that's all we, that's all we, uh, we assume. And note already that this is a very nice common reference string, but it's just one group element, and we just combine them and then get, again, for any common reference string that we combine by the closure under composition of the group, we get a nice common reference string again. And essentially to prove the knowledge of this x, uh, such that g, the x is equal to h, we first re-randomize the common reference string, and then we uh, raise these re-randomized group elements to be h, and that's uh, what our proof is composed of. And to verify this proof, uh, we just need to compute the bearings and, 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 and verify that these two equality codes. What, what's happening here is essentially we are computing a re-randomized version of uh, the element tool. And the idea is that if, uh, the only way we, compute, we could compute a diffie element tuple by knowing uh, from of h and t is by, by knowing x because t was uh, was uniformly sampled, so that, that we suppose we know. <coughs> okay. Unfortunately, this simple scheme is not enough. What we would like to prove is um, the statement of this family in the sense that we would like to prove that we know an x such that g to the x is equal to h1 or h2 or so on, hn. Um, so, so this junk is statement. And then, of course, the, 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 the previous scheme does not suffice for this purpose. So let's try to see how we can extend this. Um, so the basic idea is the same. Now we, um, we sample for each, uh, for each element of the tuple, we sample a random tj. And we compute, again, um, uh, the pi, which is essentially a, a, a diffie Hellman tuple of uh, ti and hi. Uh, the point is that uh, for any uh, tj which is not my i, I can just compute a, a particular common, common reference string, which I, which I know the discrete logarithm of, right? So I know the tj. Except for the i, for which I need to enforce the condition that um, that has to, has to have something to do with the original common reference string t. So what's happening here is that I'm essentially allowing the prover to cheat in n minus 1 position without knowing the position uh, by enforcing the following condition so that all the ti's must multiply together with t. So this, this, this essentially says that um, at least one of these ti's should contain some information about the t. Right? So this, this means that in order to compute all of this proof, there, exists, there should exist at least one position uh, where I know the discrete log of HI. And this is this, is, this is the intuition. Uh, for, for further details, please, please uh, read the paper. Um, and again, the common reference string is exactly the same as before. So it's from an efficiently recognizable set because uh, it's a group element, so we can just do any testing membership of group element of prime order is trivial and is closed under composition because it's again part of a group part of a group uh, yes, it's a group band. so by definition it's closed under composition so this, this uh, just works right away um, so combining this scheme with the, with the variant of uh, HK08 which uh, as I suggested before gives us our new um, our new ring signature scheme in the standard model and to reiterate uh, our, our our signature scheme is four, group four times n plus three group elements plus one. Um, so the security of the scheme is proven against uh, the Q strong Diffie-Hellman assumption, which we inherit from uh, HK08, and the linear of exponent assumption, which we inherit from our non-interactive zero knowledge. Um, so of course, the linear knowledge of exponent assumption is highly non-standard, and we show that uh, it at least holds against generic, generic attacks. Again, I refer to the paper for, for a formal treatment on the method. So, a still open problem is how to compute, uh, so how to instantiate efficiently a uh, fully secure ring signature scheme, which are proven provably secure against the falsifiable assumption. So, we don't know how to do this yet. Yeah. 
Uh, so that can say that I can include my dog in it. Uh, do you need to have the trust set up to generate this set? No, no. So the, the idea is that um, the CRS is a single group element, right? So I can just embed it in each uh, verification key. So whenever each user samples his verification key, he can also just sample together a random group element, right? So, and, and it's just included in the, in the verification key of the user. So now the verification key is the old verification key, key and a uh, random group element, which is the CRS. And whenever I want to prove a statement, so whenever I want to perform a signature on behalf of this string, I define my common reference string as the multiplication of this string. So that's that's essentially the main thing. So we don't need we don't need any trust essential. Any any other questions? Please. Um, I can just yell as well. It's okay. Uh, so you compute this product. So does it, for example, the last guy, what if he sees all the previous CRSs, can he do some cheating by somehow picking his CRS somehow dependent on the previous ones or something? Like that? Uh, that, that, okay, that's a good point. Uh, so short question, so short answer, no. Uh, but you would like to know why, I guess. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the point is that we don't have any specific requirement of the CRS except that it's a group element. Right. Uh -huh. So that we don't have any requirement. It can be any. Right? Um, so even if you pick your CRS adaptively with respect to the other CRS of the ring, the composition will always be able to that. So there is no way you get out of the set of valid common reference strings. Right. I mean, unless you do some, something crazy, but then, then it's easy to, to, to check that it's not a correctly well formed uh, CRS. So, um, actually, actually, that um, where is it? Um, that's exactly the problem why we cannot prove uh, full anonymity whenever we use the, the standard non-interactive zero. Because the adversary could just pick this common reference string adaptively, choosing with respect to the, to the other, um, the other uh, elements of the ring. And then, and then anonymity is gone. Okay, so, you, so this essentially says that each user is anonymous only with respect to a ring which is composed exclusively by honest keys. Okay, and there of course we don't have to go. But but if the ring is composed only of honest keys, so yes. then if we have honest CRSs, right? Yes. And then you could Assume everyone is chosen at random when you multiply them to get yes, yes, yes. valid CRS and so forth. Indeed. So can't you get the square root trade off then to get mm, sublinear complexity instead of get square root and complexity? Oh, in the, in the for, you mean for this basic case? For this yeah. Case, yeah, possibly. I mean, we didn't, we didn't really look into this extensively, so this was more like the corollary of our theorem. Uh, possibly, yes. I mean, actually, I, yeah, you could, you could get something. Any questions? Okay, thanks, Julia, and subject. <coughs>